It was supposed to end after Frieza. It was supposed to end after Cell. It was supposed to end after Boo. It was supposed to die after GT. Welcome back to the Van Andrew Variety Hour, the only show that woke up 10 minutes ago and is currently sitting in the worst chair in the house. I know there's one next to me, but it makes me look smaller than I am, and I'm already really small. Last night while I was like laying in bed, I, I just had like this overwhelming urge to rant about a particular topic today, and that is the concept of a good ending. Every good story deserves a good ending. Every good story deserves a satisfactory ending, an intended ending ending. A lot of good stories don't get that, especially in the modern entertainment cycle. Most shows, when written, have an ending in mind for them, and then they become renewed, and then they become renewed again, and then they're renewed again, over and over and over, because now the networks own that show. The producer, the creator, may leave the project, and the show will still continue. The network is essentially like a little kid who has a pet bunny, and he's running around door to door showing everybody this pet bunny, but turns out that this pet bunny died like three houses back, and now he's just dragging the fucking corpse of this rabbit behind him. It's losing pieces of itself on the asphalt, but the network just completely oblivious to it knocks on your door, and he's just like, hey, look at this, and you're just like, kid, that's not cool. That's not being cool with the Jeffersons. So a weirdly morbid metaphor, but it works. This isn't even counting things like, you know, uh, reboots and uh, reimaginings and that, that concept. That's essentially uh, entertainment necromancy at this point. Are there shows that I think of in particular whenever it comes to this topic? The example that inspired me, really, that got me thinking about this was uh, The Flash by The CW. CW is uh, really bad about this, by the way. They're on the list more than one time. But I stopped watching The Flash around season five. Um, I felt like the show had pretty much run its course and season six is apparently pretty decent as well, surprisingly. So I thought, you know, why don't I take a look at season six, see where it is. That's when I found out there were nine seasons of The Flash and it like just ended. Like the last episode just happened and Maybe, maybe I am being misinformed by a very biased online opinion, but um, if this is what the show has to offer now... Then I, I don't want it. Like that, that's awful. Uh, the, the early special effects and the early choreography in the show wasn't the best either. I mean, it was clearly made for TV, but that, that plays like an episode of Power Rangers. Like, that, that right, that right there is up there with Beetleborgs. You can tell they got lazy when they started force zapping everybody, you know? Because that's not how the Flash operates. Like, the Flash has done that in certain storylines, but that's almost, almost never the focus of what he can do. When it becomes lightning, why don't, why, why, does, why doesn't he just dodge it? The Flash is more than capable of doing that. Not TV Flash, not, not the fastest man alive, Barry Allen, who's constantly being outfasted by another fucking speedster. Uh, the Walking Dead is another wonderful example. The Walking Dead drags from point to point because it had a finite story that it was trying to work through at first, and then the author took their time, as they should, and so The Walking Dead had to plod and plod and slow down, not to mention its loss of budget after the first season for some reason. Because by the time we get to the ending, it no longer feels satisfactory, it no longer feels good. It feels like, oh my god, are we here yet? Jesus Christ, we've been standing in a forest talking for three days. And yeah, there are consequences of the story to keep you engaged, but this pretty much only happens at the beginning of the season, the middle of the season, and the end of the season. That is about, about it. Anything else pretty much falls under the purvey of uh, nothing happens. Because in other shows, such as uh, another one we're going to be talking about in a minute, Supernatural, there's a monster of a weak theme. Like, they're always doing something to keep you engaged and to keep you hooked on the story. They'll throw tidbits of the little overarching story as well, just to make sure you're aware that things are still happening, gears are still moving. The Walking Dead doesn't really do that. The Walking Dead is so focused on its character drama that it sucks that the characters are usually bad. 
by the end of it, at least. Early on, they're still fine. Like, the character drama is great up until, again, I think about season five. Maybe even season, you know, we'll go further. Season eight was still decent. But there's three seasons after that, and it's just like, oh my god, end. Not not even counting, like, spinoffs. Spinoffs I don't have a problem with in this universe, because it, it would work if the cast of characters was good, and if every zombie story ever told hadn't already been told, you know? You can't do a whole lot with just zombies anymore to keep people interested. You have to have good characters and good pacing, and The Walking Dead sucks at that. But while we're touching on Supernatural, uh, it should have ended on season five hard stop. Like, there's absolutely no excuse for it to have continued after Season 5. Season 5 was very clearly, very deliberately, the intended ending. That's where the show should have climaxed and finished. And then we got 10 more seasons! We have 15 seasons of Supernatural. The show ran from, like, 2005 to 2021, I think. And don't mistake me, after Season 8, they catch their groove again. They get back into it, and then they actually start becoming good. Uh, the ending is not great, but it's fine. Okay, let me defend that statement, because a lot of people hate the Supernatural ending. I don't mind the Supernatural ending, primarily because early, early on in the show, they make it very clear and very obvious that any of these hunts that they're on, even if they're just day-to-day -day things like hunting vampires... Any of these hunts could kill them. When you put yourself in fatal situations every day, one of them is going to kill you, almost definitely. So for all of this to have happened, for them to have prevented the apocalypse, to have essentially killed God, for just a vampire to take him out, to take out Dean, is, is fitting. Because at this point, what else is there for Dean to do? What else is there for him to have? There is nothing else for him to accomplish because he has, at this point, no interest in, like, a family life beyond hunting. Hunting is everything to him, and he's hunted everything. Especially when compared to the ending of Season 5. Mediocre at best, though. Swan Song is the name of the episode. It was meant to be a send-off. And it was so well written and so well done that even though I still love the later seasons of Supernatural, in my heart, I feel as if season five is where it ended. Uh, season five is the 2012 of Supernatural, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Like, after that, it got weird. Uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, though, we have Game of Thrones. S season eight was legendarily terrible. Like, people hated it. Again, it was still better than most of what was on TV at the time, but compared to the uh, writing of the previous seasons, it was nasty. It was gross. This was largely due to D.B. Weiss and David, uh, whatever his fucking name is. It was largely due to them most likely wanting to get on with their life and go to Star Wars like they had intended to do. Um... Which is a terrible reason to ruin a show, especially one as uh, interesting and as engaging as Game of Thrones. Especially when they didn't even go to Star Wars. They didn't even become writers for Star Wars because they negotiated a higher paying contract with Netflix. And that's, that's unfortunate. That sucks, dude. However, I do also understand that there would potentially be another reason. They wanted to end it because there's no next book in sight for them to draw inspiration from. George R.R. Martin is not going to finish this series. He, he probably already has, actually, and it's just sitting on it until the right time. But that means we don't know when it's coming out. It's not being published anytime soon. And they were struggling with ideas as soon as they got away from George R.R. Martin's original writing. They still held it together for a while, but you, you could see where the cracks start to form. Another possibility, too, is that George R.R. Martin is pulling inspiration from the seasons of Game of Thrones and has altered his writing dramatically to not do some of the things they did. Who knows? I don't, that's for sure. I will say, though, D.B. Weiss and David What's-His-Face are uh, currently working on an adaptation of the three-body problem. I'm hyped for that. Like, they can do something really good with that, especially because the three-body problem is finished. It's uh, finite. So, with any luck, that's going to be phenomenal. For those that don't know, the three-body problem is a sci-fi novel trilogy by uh, Chinese author Lu Cixin, and it's really good. Give it a read sometime. And just to make it kind of clear, I'm not just talking about Western media. Uh, the most notorious example in anime that I can think of is probably Dragon Ball. Goku. 
before it even got to Super, it had five opportunities to end and to stop making things because, you know, it's it kind of ran out of cool stuff. It could have ended after Dragon Ball. It was supposed to end after Frieza. It was supposed to end after Cell. It was supposed to end after Boo. It was supposed to die after GT. And then Dragon Ball Evolution happened, and then Toriyama decided, ooh, no, we ain't, we ain't having that. that. That's not something that I can deal with. And don't mistake me, uh, Battle of the Gods and the Broly movie are both great movies. I haven't seen I haven't seen the third DBZ movie yet, or Dragon Ball Super movie yet. But the first two... Oh no, I'm forgetting Golden Freeze. Golden Freeze was fine. That, the first three Dragon Ball Super movies were good. Have you read the manga recently? There isn't really a story that I could possibly care about, because I can tell you everything that's going to happen play by play by play. Goku and Vegeta are going to be s training with Whis doing something in the cosmos when this weird crazy new powerful thing shows up and they go oh let's fight him it looks so like it's gonna be fun and then they fight him and then they lose but because they lose they get a zenkai boost so they fight him again and then they lose again then they get another zenkai boost and then they maybe sometimes get another form Ultra Ego Vegeta still got his ass beat. Uh, Frieza gets a new form. Everybody gets a new form, like, every couple of years or so. And then they beat the thing. And then they're like, yeah, woo, we beat the thing! And then another thing shows up, and the cycle repeats. Always a universal threat. It's always a, a, a problem for the entirety of Universe 7, or even the multiverse at this point. But there's no weight, there's no impact, nothing bad is going to happen because of the presence of the Dragon Balls, of course. And nothing bad is going to stick, because that's not what people want. People want to see Goku and Vegeta win. I am glad that Vegeta is finally, like, the number two of Dragon Ball Z, or Dragon Ball. Because he's he's earned it, he, he deserves it. I wish Piccolo was more prevalent. I do. Vegeta is just the same character archetype as Piccolo. Piccolo's just a little wiser, and a little less hot-headed. But the list goes on with this concept. Uh, Star Wars, Dexter, Lost, Naruto, uh, Baruto, you know. I'm not gonna sit here and just complain about all of them, but you get the picture. When a show ends like it's intended, it will resonate with you forever, but when a show ends abruptly or poorly or or continues after it's supposed to be ending people are gonna know and people are always going to point it out but as long as they continue to make money i guess networks don't care and that's really the moral of the story isn't it all of these shows are very successful and all of them are very good and that's kind of the problem it's tiring i don't want to see 55 more seasons of Sam and Dean doing the same thing every day. If you're gonna continue a show, you need to treat it like a soap opera. You need to kill characters and bring in new characters and have exciting new weird storylines. Soap operas have kind of perfected the concept of uh, just making a show go on forever. The Guiding Light has over a thousand episodes. That's ridiculous. That's b bedonkers. Anyway, um, I'm rambling now, so I think we're gonna wrap it up here. It's the middle of the day. Like I'm, I'm recording at a weird hour, so I, I hope the lighting's fine. I hope, I hope everything sounds good on y'all's end. I just felt the urge to talk about this. I don't know why. I don't know why I suddenly felt so passionate about it. And I recently hit 600 subscribers, which is a crazy number for me because 500 was my goal by the end of the year, and we're still not there yet. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Please like the video. Please engage in some way. Get me in the algorithm if you would. Um, and just, y'all have a Merry Christmas. It's probably after Christmas when this video is up, but I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Yeah.